Hey guys, it's Rick. Welcome back to the HD Vibe channel. If you'd like to see more tips, tricks, rides, reviews, installs on my Harley-Davidson Touring Motorcycles, as well as information about motorcycles and the motorcycle community at large, I ask that you please hit that subscribe button. And when you do subscribe, please leave a comment down below saying I subscribe so I can personally reach out and thank you for supporting the channel. Also, make sure to hit that bell icon and select all so you do get notified every time I do put out new content. So we're here back in the studio and I am with my friend Marty, who is a retired MSF instructor. And we were talking the other day on the phone about kind of, you know, spring is on the way here in Missouri anyway. It's been a cold, cold winter yeah. and we haven't had the opportunity to get out. And it's really probably time to kick a little bit of the rust and off of our skills as we're getting back out yeah. on the bikes again. And so we really want to talk about three things, they're really a bonus um, to think about when you're getting ready for the riding season. The first being cornering and then swerving, braking, and then some slow speed skills. Amen. Yeah. And we'll get into that right after this. So we're back and I'm here again with Marty and we're again, we're gonna talk about cornering, swerving, stopping, and slow ski speed skills. But what we wanna start with is really the overall strategy, Marty, that we need to have sort of underlying all these. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, in MSF, we use the C strategy and it just stands for search, evaluate, and execute. And under each of these categories, you see that whenever you're searching, you're using your visual strategy. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Anytime you're evaluating your situation or what you're getting into, your brain has to be active. It has to be unimpaired. And anytime you're doing the execution of what you've planned to do, you've got to kick in those motor skills that you've been trained and you have practiced with. Overall, riding always with a C strategy. So Marty, now we're going to talk about cornering, uh, but I see you have search, evaluate, and execute um, as a strategy we talked about just before this. So this is critical for all of these maneuvers, is that correct? Yes, anytime you're on the road, always have your strategy going. You're searching out your things that can hurt you, you're evaluating the situation you're getting into, and you have a plan of attack of executing how you're going to get through it. Okay, great. So as we look at this diagram, tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here and how to execute uh, this curve. Okay, what we're looking at is a, a standard curve on a two-lane road. You won't see any of these in any high-speed areas, but on normal two-lane roads, you'll get a lot of these. And we like to get them, but you have to execute them properly. Any kind of corner, you've searched coming into your corner, You've evaluated what you're seeing in front of you and what, how you're going to take it, and then you have to execute your plan. And a plan for a corner is always going to be slow, look, press, roll. We always say slipper. Anytime you're going into a corner, you've got to slow down before the corner to see what you're getting into. If you can't look all the way through the corner, there could be surprises. As you look through your corner, you're evaluating all your hazards, all your obstacles, anything in that corner that's gonna hurt you. As you're going through there, you're gonna press on the grip in the direction you wanna go. And the key main ending element is rolling on the throttle. You do not ever wanna coast through a corner or slow down in a corner. You want to be rolling on the throttle through the corner. That allows the suspension of the motorcycle to push itself down into the pavement, giving you better traction and pushing you through the corner. Never coast through a corner. Excellent, so on this diagram, so let's talk about positioning in terms of where we need to set ourselves up to make kind of a sharp curve here. Good, as you see right here, the current uh, method of teaching for beginner riders is to take a middle, middle, middle path of travel through a corner. The first style was coming from the outside, going to the inside, and remain and coming out on the outside. So you have two styles you can use. If you're a beginner, you can stay straight in the middle of your path. But if you're a more experienced rider, you may find yourself coming from the outside, cutting to the inside, and then letting it ease back out to the outside for a little more excitement. Right, and so what I think about on the kind of outside, inside, outside, it sort of straightens that curve out a little bit and doesn't make it as 
uh, you know, if it's a 90, it kind of reduces that to a, a lesser angle. Yes, you're, you're cutting your angle down, which straightens out the corner and allows, you, allows your bike to stay a little more upright. You're not having to lean it over near as much. Some, that, no, that's, no more, that's not fun. You want to lean your bike through. But if you don't want to lean it through, you can take a middle, middle, middle path of travel. If you want to lean it and, and enjoy that corner a little more, inside, outside, the inside corner to outside flow, you can really make the bike move through the corner smoothly. And so in terms of the, the slipper execution, so we're slowing before we get into this curve, right? Always slow before you get into a curve. You don't know, sometimes you can't see around that corner and you don't know what you're getting into. So go in slow enough where you can do the final, which is roll on. Right, and so as far as looking, we're not just looking here, right? We're kind no. of looking over here as we're executing yes. through that curve. Always look as far as you can through your corner. If it's something you're kind of blinded by at some point, then you're looking from here to here. As you get further into the corner, more of it opens up. You're looking here to here. Always look through the corner as far as you can see. You're wanting to see everything you can as far out to give you more time to execute any kind of evasive maneuvers you may need to do. And then as far as pressing, is that almost like when you get to the apex of this curve, you begin to press on the throttle again or? Well, no, you're starting to press. As soon as you've slowed and gone into the corner, you start easily pressing on that grip in the direction you want to code. Gotcha. A right-hand corner, you're pressing on that right grip. The more you press, the harder that bike's going to turn. The less you press, the ease. If, you're, if you do it really hard and jerky, you'll find the bike goes in and turns up, goes in, straightens up, goes in. That means you're pressing and releasing. Press. You press a little bit to start and just take it through the corner. The bike will go through the corner nice and smoothly. And I think that's a great point on the press because a lot of people try to steer. Right? Correct. And it is going to stand the bike up as you're trying to go through that corner and actually make you go wide and go off, Correct. off the road at that point. Yes. And a key thing on this look is, again, your bike goes where you're looking. We always say in training, your bike goes where your nose is pointing. If I'm looking to go to my right, I should stay looking there. As soon as I turn and look back here to see, whoop, did some tree grow up in front of me? Your bike's going to start going that direction now and you wanted it to go this direction. Okay, great, and then the roll. Roll, again, is squatting that motorcycle down, the suspension, it's loading the suspension, which gives you better traction on the road. So as you're rolling on the throttle, it's not slamming on the throttle, it's a slow, progressive roll on the throttle. You just don't win it, and it can be maintaining the speed you went in with, that's okay but better is give it a little bit of gas going through the corner. Don't ever slow down. Okay, that sounds good. Is there anything else on this, Marty, before we move on to the next topic? Keep practicing. Them. Okay, Marty, so we talked about cornering. Now we're gonna talk about swerving. And I think this is something that we really need to think about because this is applicable. This can happen anytime, anywhere out on the road that we have to make this sort of an evasive swerve maneuver. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, yeah, it's amazing how out on most of the highways these days and a lot of country roads, a lot of debris ends up on the road and you don't notice it until the very last minute and it can be very devastating. So as you travel along, if you discover something that you cannot steer around uh, quickly, a swerve is your next option. And a swerve is technically just two very sharp corners. You have a corner, a swerve, and a corner to get out of the path of the obstacle, and you have another swerve and corner to get back onto your path of travel that you were going. So, the main thing in a swerve is separate the actions. Never do any braking in the swerve. Separate all your braking. Slow down coming into it. If you can't steer around it and avoid it, then do one corner, swerve out of the way of it. Do another corner, swerving back into your path of travel. And you can slow down here again if you need to stop or continue on. Never do any braking during a swerve. So this is something really we can practice out in the parking lot, just with a few yeah. cones set up here as sort of as your impediment, and then just a couple cones here to begin your, because really you're going to be 
braking here to slow down if you can making that sharp curve or sharp turn to the right in this case yes and then coming through and making that quick left to straighten the bike up and then you really to slow down and settle yourself is going to be somewhere out here yeah. right or you may have traffic that is up here in front of you now that is stopped right. and you've swerved and missed this but now you can't continue on so you have to do your braking here yeah and again observation through it all knowing what you're getting into any slowing down here can make this swerve a whole lot easier but sometimes you don't have the possibility you don't have that capability of immediately slowing down beforehand right so you've got to do a quick swerve yep. and then slow down yeah so two options so i think if you think about this being out on the road um it, again it gets back to that c strategy right Amen. because you're constantly searching as you're riding i know when i'm riding i'm looking many cars in front of me to see what's yes. going on in front of me so you kind of get that so you Hopefully, if you're, if you're employing that strategy, you're going to see this impediment or that traffic stop well before you have to sort of do evasive maneuvers. And I think that is, that is something that it, we don't necessarily think about all the time, but I think it's a critical skill that as riders, because we are more vulnerable, we have to make sure that we're constantly scanning around to understand what's going on so that we can evaluate what we need to do next and then execute a good strategy like this to get around an obstacle. Yes. Main time, uh, the main way you don't see the obstacle that's right in front of you is if you're following too closely. Right. If something comes up from underneath a tractor trailer semi that he ran over easily but is now blocking your path, you don't have time to, oh, geez, where did that come from? Well, you were up too close and you couldn't see out far enough ahead of you. Yeah. So these happen quite frequently and following too closely behind traffic. Great. So Marty, there's obviously some braking involved in this. So yes. I think the next thing we should talk about is braking. Yes. Let's All right. That. Okay, Marty. So now we're going to talk about braking. Um, but I think one of the one, the things before we kind of get into the diagram that maybe we should talk about is, you know, the use of the front brake and rear brake and how much you should use of each and should you use both, should you use one and, yeah. and all that kind of thing. So you could cover a little bit of that before we get into the diagram. Sure. Um, always. You want to use both brakes. Some people, well, I'm perfectly fine just using my front brake, or I don't want to use, I don't want to get my foot up there on that rear brake each time. Every time you're training and practicing, you're practicing and training for what you would do in an emergency. So in an emergency, it becomes a reflex action, not a thought out process. It's just something you immediately react to and do. So if you train as always only using one brake, then in an emergency, you're probably only going to use one brake. The front brake gives you 70% of your stopping power. Wow. That's because you have so much pressure going down on that front wheel right. and you get better braking. 30% is still on your rear brake. If you never use it, then you're in an emergency, you're only going to get 70% of your possible braking power. Right, you so that's going to increase the, the stopping distance yes. itself because of that. Yes, right? and if you try that out on a parking lot, Try just using your front brake only and see, mark it where you stopped and do it again at the same speed, be honest, and try it with only your rear brake. See where you stopped. Be honest again, try it with both the next time and see how much shorter that stopping distance is. Right. So train to what you're going to do in an emergency. And I think the other point to think about too is when you're practicing and you're doing just pulling that front brake in the parking lot. If you have that front wheel turn just a little bit, Amen. you're probably going to go down. You'll go down, yeah. Any, any kind of turn on that front turn, you always want to be your handlebar straight, your wheel straight out in front of you. Keep the handlebar straight. Excellent. So what do we have on the okay. diagram here, Marty? When you're practicing braking, and again, this is braking by responding. You know where you're going to start your braking. You know where how you're going, all like that. If you're reacting, it's going to be a whole lot worse. So always break to responding. You're seeing what's coming up, you're applying your brakes. This is a good practice exercise to do with braking. Not out on the road. You want to get in a parking lot that yeah. you can be point. protected. So practice your braking in a, in a safe environment. A standard for braking at 20 miles an hour would be coming to these cones, stopping, applying your brakes at these cones, and based on 20 miles an hour, if you're a basic rider, you should be able to stop in 21 to 29 feet, which would be out here. If you're 
A good rider, you should be able to stop coming at 20 miles an hour and starting here in 17 to 20 feet, which is in here. If you're a proficient rider coming at this at 20 miles an hour and beginning your braking here, you should be able to stop in less than 17 feet. And again, that takes practice. The more you practice this, the, more, the better you get. But remember, you know you're going to apply these brakes right here. If you're reacting to a stop, you didn't know you had to apply those brakes, right. and you're reacting to a situation, the time it takes for you to perceive a situation and start the reaction is one and a half seconds. So if you take one and a half seconds off of that, you're going to be up here a lot further. So be careful of that. Keep track of what's going on in front of you. That one and a half seconds, in most cases, will keep you out of an accident if you can do it knowingly. So it's that the, the brain telling the hand and the foot to react takes one and a half seconds. One and a half seconds on a standard adult, non-impaired. Right, right, excellent. And so just to clarify, so we're, say you're starting out back here in this yep. exercise, you're coming up here, getting to about 20 miles an hour, and then you're applying your brake, both front and rear, with also, I think, the thing to remember here is we're we're doing evasive braking, but we don't want to lock up Never. the wheels, right? You always want, you do not, you're getting to the point of threshold braking. Right. Threshold braking is applying as much brake as you can without locking up either tire. If you lock up a tire, a tire is not stopping when it's locked, it is skidding. That's not slowing. Excellent. So threshold braking will get you to these things. If you're not doing threshold braking, that's something you learn as you get more comfortable on your motorcycle. How much brake do I, can I apply before it locks? Some of the bikes have ABS, they won't lock up. Yep. Well, they try not to lock right. up, but you can lock an ABS bike. Yep. So be careful. Okay, so I think all good points. This is definitely something that anybody can do out on a parking lot. Yep. You find a school around your house, a church parking lot. Take some time on this because this, again, um, is something that can really save your bacon when you're out on yes. the road, for Good sure. Good braking skills are critical. Yep. Excellent, so let's move on to our last topic and that's gonna be sort of slow speed and kind of pulling this all together. Yeah, just overall control of your bike. No matter what it weighs, all bikes, you have to be comfortable with what the bike can do and what you can do with it. Okay, we'll get into that next. Okay, Marty, so we've talked about cornering, we've talked about swerving, we've talked about braking, and now we're going to talk about a slow speed skill that you can apply sort of in your everyday riding potentially. And what do we got laid out here, Marty? Well, this is what we call the limited space maneuver. And it, it's, you, it's laid out on a two lane road with or without shoulders, and it just helps you utilize slow speed maneuvering control of your bike. Right. We do this as a limited space maneuver as in a four-sided rectangle. This is example on a roadway, just standard road, and if you have shoulders, a little more. It's a 20 foot, 10 on each side, so you can practice it as in a parking lot, just throwing some cones or tennis balls, cut them in half because they roll away if you don't. Uh, tennis balls on a parking lot, Start out much bigger than you need, than you're trying for. Get used to the maneuver. Right. Get used to it, then work in the size to where you're actually able to do it in a two lane road. Yeah, so this could be applicable. I think, you know, we've all been sort of out on that country road and maybe we pass <laughs> up a turn um, and, you know, we're looking out, it's safe and, and we can make that sort of U-turn to go back and catch our turn. And the last thing I want to do is have to stop and duck walk and stop right. and duck walk and stop three and duck. Point, eight yeah, point turn. eight point <laughs> turns. So, you know, I think this is a, a great skill to have and maybe just talk about sort of this path of travel you have here in the blue, Marty, and, and what we need to be thinking about when we're going through okay. that. What we try to do, and, and I, I call it putting the bike into a rhythm. As you're driving along on your bike, you can be nice, relaxed, cruising on the road and you're weaving back and forth, just relaxing with your bike. That's the bike's rhythm. So if you put it into that rhythm, it handles it nice and smooth and you're just putting it through that pace. 
So if you take the same principle and apply it to a U-turn, you're using that rhythm to lean it out, lean it back to the edge, and then lean it in and hold it until you come around and then lean it back out and you've just kept the bike through a rhythm. All you did was hold it this one long time to make your turnaround. Excellent and I think another way you can practice sort of that rhythm is just sort of set up some cones and do a weave where you can kind of get that yes. bike rocking in the parking lot and kind of right. again just knock that rust off to get used to that bike and feeling that movement and yeah, kind of becoming one with the bike right. as you're going through You're that. not afraid to let it just go to side to side. You're relaxed right. with it and you're letting it just get into its rhythm. The bike can weigh anything. The bikes are up to a thousand pounds or more. It doesn't, you're not going to fall over because you're moving forward. So the bike is relaxed in that motion. Go with it. Let it be doing that and take it by holding it a little bit and you've done it. Start big though and work down to your goal. You can take it into a parking lot, do it there, practice. Excellent. So I think we've covered a lot of great topics today um, and I hope the viewers have gotten a lot out of this. So what I wanna do is I will actually put a link to the MSF website where you can find some of this information about all of these kind of different things and a lot more information. Oh, yeah. Um, the other thing I would suggest is in your local area, either through your Harley Davidson dealership or other state uh, run programs is, is take a BRC class. Yes. Um, and even if you're an experienced rider, I bet you might learn something if by taking never, one of those if classes. If you've never taken yeah. a class, a BRC for an experienced rider might be a little boring because they're teaching new riders how to shift, how to use the brakes properly, how to use the throttle. Right. That might be a little boring. Yep. But the BRC2, which is the same stuff for the more advanced rider, might be a better fit for you. But either are usable. Sometimes those skills of shifting and stuff have been a long time not being used. Excellent. And I will say, if you are a new rider looking to get your motorcycle endorsement here in Missouri, you can come and see me this spring at gatewayhd.com. I will be at the Ride Academy and we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, we got dates lined up, I think starting in early March and going all the way through October of this year. So Marty, I wanna thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. And uh, I think we'll wrap it up here and I will leave you with a thought. Life is short, get out and ride the bike. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now.